And I want you to go to Matthew chapter 13. And he spoke to many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow. And when he had sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. Say wayside. wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell on stony places where they didn't have much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground. Say into. into. Say good ground. good ground. And brought forth fruit. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Now, let me tell you something. This is all of us. And every word of God that is given, I love this 30, 60, and 100, because I really believe that if I have the right ground, now notice that God doesn't make a big deal about the, he, I mean, it's all harvest to him. Whether it be 30, 60, or 100, to him, it's good, it's good ground. Every, every one of those, 30, 60, or 100, is good ground. And that, that's hard for us to sometimes understand. I tell you, as a pastor, I get frustrated because I'd like to see everybody in this church be the 100 ground. I, I, I'm just serious. I mean, it just almost frustrates me. That's a human condition. I want to see you as 100 ground. And so I'm frustrated when you're not. And I, don't, I get frustrated with 30 percenters. How many of you, come on, let's be honest. If you go to work and the guy next to you, you're digging the ditch. Let's just say, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, not that you're a ditch digger, but if you're a ditch digger and the guy next to you is holding the shovel and you're digging, doesn't that just really bother y'all? Come on, it really bothers me. It really bothers me. I don't care what job you're on. You might be the fry cook at Chick-fil-A or fry cook at Fish Filet or whatever it is or what's that, go, go, Fish Golden Place. What's that place I like? Long, Long John somethings. <laughs> Captain D's. And you're throwing fish and washing dishes and somebody else is over on their cell phone. Doesn't that just make y'all mad? Oh, I can't stand that. I can't. But God said that every one of these is good ground. And some fell on good ground. So good news to you 30 percenters is God still thinks you're good ground. I may not. <laughs> but God does. <laughs> Say, well, you know what, Pastor Steve? I don't care whether you like me or not. I'm still good ground. Amen. That's why, that's why when you start talking about somebody and you start running them down and you start chewing them up and they're a believer, you done missed it because God said they were good ground. I would hope, though, that as we continue to preach the word of God, that you, like me, would say, you know what, I want the hundredfold. I mean, you know, not that you play the lottery, but let's just say you did. If the only time I'm willing to sin in the lottery is when it's worth 250, 300 million. I mean, a million's just not enough. To, no, I'm just kidding, y'all. I'm just messing around here. But you know what I'm trying to say. Y'all, ain't none of y'all got a million. You're like, if I could just win that 200 million, like the million wouldn't be enough. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, you'd be disappointed if you got the million. Oh, I don't want the million. You know, and then, and then you think about winning the money, and somebody says, well, half of that's going to be taxes. You're like, well, forget it. All right, hey, half a million is better than no million. Anybody know what I'm talking about? My point here is that we, we should stop being disappointed in, in these things. We stop expecting uh, uh, the results to always be th this, this uh, you know, exorbitant thing, but be, be, be understanding that, that a hundredfold really is better than... <laughs> Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Wouldn't you rather have... All the million than 500,000? And God is saying here, unlike the, the lotto where the state's going to take your money, and I shouldn't even be preaching on lotto, amen. Jesus, forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the point being, God said you could have the 100. There's a position in you, there's a position in God where you can actually have 30, 60, and 100 fold return. That God, His word can come to you. And his word can be valued at the level of a 100-fold return. God's seed planted in you, one seed worth 100-fold. Isn't that amazing? So if I were you, I hope you're like me, 
I want the maximum return that I can get. I don't just want to be saved. There are some that are satisfied with saved. That's it. That's all I want. Saved. Just saved. I'm saved. That's it. Saved. But they miss out on everything that God has beyond saved. They never get the rest of what God has. And then they go through life and they don't realize they make all kinds of money. See, because they think that, that, you know, well, I'm doing good. I'm making tons of money. But then all of a sudden, their bag has holes in it. Has, I, don't, I don't think I'm the only one here. Money coming in, boom, 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 bam, bam, boom. Living good, bank account, and then the bottom falls out. Boosh! And now I get, all that's gone. Have you ever had that happen? I made tons of money. I was selling timeshare for Marriott. Ask me where it went. I got two sets of golf clubs in my, in my garage that kind of tell you where it went. And I can talk about the, the golf course and how enjoyable that was. But I have nothing to show for those thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars that I made. Because I didn't really have blessing. I had money. I right. mean, no, there's a big difference between money and blessing. Somebody ought to clap and shout amen right there. You know, most of you, this is the truth. Don't, don't get mad at me when I say this. You're one health crisis away from poor. Oh, look at y'all. Look at y'all. And they're like, no, you'll confess that in Jesus' name. You can confess all you want to, but the point is this. You want to be in a position where you don't have the health crisis. You want to be in the position where you don't have to spend all your money on your health and sickness and diseases. You want to be in a position where when something does come, that it isn't necessarily only medicine that can cure you. Because Jesus is the healer. Look at somebody and say, Jesus is the healer. You don't want to go through the disappointments of losing children. and I mean, many of you have had great precious promises sitting in your hands and lost those promises. God guaranteed you babies and, and, a, and a coffer that was full and, and a quiver that was full. But you missed out, and you don't know why. I can tell you, because some get 30, some get 60, and some get a whole 100 full. And here's the problem. It's never God. Now, everybody's got mad at me right there. Everybody's like, wait a minute. Because I think God was trying to teach me something. By taking your baby? That God would take your baby to teach you something? That God would, I mean, that God would wreck your marriage to teach you something? Not my God. Not my God. My God wouldn't do that. The thief is the one that came to steal, to kill, and to destroy but Jesus came. Every day you think about, maybe some of you ladies in there have lost your, your babies. Or maybe some of you moms and dads have lost your marriages. And maybe some problems have occurred in your life. Let me tell you something. God is your friend. God is a good God. God is the one who will deliver you and set you free. And if you want to be angry at anyone or anything, be angry at the world, the devil, and the flesh. Don't be angry at God. He didn't do it. And I'm going to prove it to you because I want you to get this. I know, I know I've got a few more minutes. Just stay with me. Now look how this goes on. But some fell on good ground. 30, 60, and 100. Next verse. Who have ears, let him hear. And the disciples came and said, why do you speak in these parables? He said unto them, because it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them it's not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given. What do they have? This knowledge, this understanding, this clarity, this perception to him that hath the revelation shall be given. It is the revelation of the word that gives to us. You'll misinterpret this if you don't get that, that it's talking about the seed and the sower. We know from this, we're going to read that Jesus is the sower of the seed and the seed is the word. But here he's talking about whoever hath is whoever hath the revelation, whoever has the understanding. You're going to see a word come up here called, and it's going to say understanding in just a minute. But look at this. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not doesn't have this revelation, isn't willing to receive this revelation. Because he's going to go into ground in a minute, isn't he? It's going to talk about four kinds of ground. 
And so he's talking, he's going to describe to us the half-nots. He's going to tell us who these half-nots are. From him shall be taken away even that he does have. Now, this is a bifold meaning because it is talking about the stuff you have. But more than that, it's the revelation you have that contains the stuff you have. If you don't know how to handle a shotgun, don't get one. Somebody, got, I remember I, I got my boat, by, I, was, I, I got all brave and, pa, and my pastor and all the guys that I was with decided they wanted me to go get a motorcycle. How many of remember these days? Guys, I went out and got the baddest Harley I could find. Seriously. I mean, I mean, I, I, it was, that, that ride was just bad. I mean, black, chrome, gorgeous ride. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I had somebody drive it to my house. I, I never even sat on a motorcycle. But I bought a Harley Davidson. Couldn't even ride it out of the shop. Had to have somebody ride it to my house. So I had JT ride it to the house, park it at the house. And so he's at the house, and I said, you know, I, I said, thank you so much. And then I thought, well, I'm going to ride this bike. <laughs> Never had a lesson. <laughs> y- y'all can just imagine how that went. I had to call JT. I said, how do you start this? <laughs> can you believe that? How do you start this? And then I said, how do you put it in gear Well, you do this? And how do you, what do you do next? And I went through the steps of how to ride. So I took it out the driveway and thought, I'm going to ride it up and down my drive. You know, there's the road that I live on is about a mile long, you know, so I could ride up and down, do these circles and stuff. I thought, it can't be no harder to bike. This thing, I mean, I'm talking about the biggest engine I could buy on a street glide. Bored out. Blah, I mean, loud. I mean, he, I mean pipes on it. <laughs> I rode it up and down successfully now, I mind you, up and down my driveway. You know, this, this road, it's not my driveway, it's the road that I live on. It's kind of a road off to the side, and then my driveway comes off it. But there's a road all the way down, and all these, like 13 houses on the road, and I go, and it's all circles. So I, I did this successfully, you know, navigated this circle. I'm thinking, after about, you know, 20, 30 minutes of this, I know what I'm doing, right? So I'm going to go <laughs> on to Spring Hill Road. I got on a pair of shorts, tennis shoes, tube stocks, and a short sleeve shirt. At least I wore a helmet. So I I get to Sally Hill Road, and I gassed it, and went to turn, and it didn't turn. It just didn't turn. The next thing I know, I was headed toward a tree, and I landed in a farm field on the side of the road, laying on the ground, laying on a ditch. This old guy had passed me in his truck when I tried to turn. I never turned. I, you know, because making that left-hand turn, had, it had monkey bars on it. <laughs> First bike I've ever ridden. First bike, right? I mean, you all, if you've ever ridden a bike, you already know, because now I know there's a little bit of effort that goes into the monkey bars that's different than if you just, you know what I'm saying? I mean, so anyway, <laughs> so I crash it. He comes walking back there. I'm all skinned up. The, my leg is char burned black. <laughs> I'm cooked. The muffler has cooked my leg. I'm scarred up. The bike's perfectly fine, though. This is, praise God. (laughs) Guy guy walks back to me and he says, Ah, looks like you took that in a little while. (laughs) (laughs) So I got the bike up, got back on the bike and said, This thing will not whoop me. I'm going to ride it again. So I rode for another 45 minutes through the woods and all this stuff. Things are going great. No problem. No problems. Until I decide to pull in this church, I'm going to make another left-hand turn. <laughs> I pulled out of this church going, uh, I can't think of the name of the road, but anyway, I pull out, and I can't make the left-hand turn again. For some reason, I can't, you know, you're supposed to look and then turn. I, I couldn't do it. And, and so I jumped this thing off into the ditch. Boom! <laughs> and I'm sitting in this, in this ditch on my heart. Cuckaburs everywhere, right? Just everywhere. So I look at this, this dilemma that I'm in. I'm thinking, I'm going to ride this thing out of the ditch. <laughs> I'm burnt. I'm scarred up. I gassed that thing trying to ride it out the ditch. And all I did was get every cuckaburr in the whole ditch on me. They scratched me up. I was so scratched up with vines and everything. I mean, just scratches all over my leg. I, and so I just stopped. And some, so finally this truck came by with a bunch of guys in it. And this guy walks over and says, sir. Somebody run you off the road? <laughs> so 
I said, uh, uh, I didn't want to answer. I didn't know what to say. Uh, no, no. Yeah, that's what happened. Somebody come by and clipped you, didn't they? Clipped you. Throw you out. No, no. He said, well, we're going to help you get that out of there. And he looks over in that ditch. He says, uh, sir, sir, how'd you get down there? I said, well, I wrote it off in that ditch. He said, uh, that's a Harley. <laughs> did, did, you, did you know that's a Harley down in that ditch? Yes, sir, I knew that was a Harley. And so anyway, long story short of it is they pulled me out of the ditch. I had to call JT to ride the bike home. And then I went to classes and learned how to ride a motorcycle. Now, here's the thing. I should have went to classes first. You, you know, here's the interesting thing. Many people are trying to do this. This is what this is talking about. You're trying to do it on your own. Who did it ever that hath? There's a revelation that comes. Let me tell you something. After I rode that thing off in the ditch and wrecked it twice on my first ride, there was a revelation that came. <laughs> I got revelation knowledge. I was absolutely positive. I don't know what I'm doing. I better learn it. And the Lord is telling us that. This is explaining to us that there is a place that, see, that, that Harley could have been taken away. My life could have been taken away. And all that I had could have been taken away because I don't have a revelation knowledge of his word. And some people, they, they come to church. This is the next, let's look at the next verse. He goes on to say this. Therefore speak I in parables because they seeing see not and hearing they hear not neither do they understand. Next verse. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. It says, by hearing you, you shall hear and, by, and shall not understand. Seeing you shall see and shall not under, and proceed. Next verse. For this people's heart has waxed gross and their eyes, their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes have been closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Next verse. And should understand with their heart. And should be converted and I should heal them. Now, do you think God wanted to heal them? My answer to you is yes. God wants to heal every person in this room by, about everything. He, there is nothing that he does not want to do for you. There is nothing that he does not want you to have. And anybody that teaches you differently has told you a lie. Because he wanted to heal them. But if I listened to that, I would think he was trying to hide the truth from them. I would think that's what he was saying. Let's look at the next verse. Blessed be your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Next verse. For verily I say to you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear. And they didn't hear them. Next verse. And so it goes on, it goes on to tell us that there were those that wanted to hear, but they never heard it. But yet the Israelites, didn't they hear about God? Didn't they hear? Now realize, I, I mean, I know there's so much that I can't go into today. I mean, like I said, this is going to be a little while that we're on his... This was written to two people, two types of people. One, or it was written to the first century church. It was not just written to us. There was an actual church that existed back then, and Jesus was dealing with the Pharisees and Sadducees and the workers of the law. He was also dealing with the Israelite people, and there was a backstory to this. There was a story that was going on behind the scenes here. It wasn't all just up front what, what you and I read. He was talking to people and generations and eras of time. He was expressing that there were times in the Israelite nation when they were hard-hearted. There were times in the Israelite nation when they were acceptable to God, but they lost their fervor. There were times when, when they fell off the path. So he wasn't just talking to you and me, and yet he was. He is also here describing to us that there's an open ear to us because of the Holy Spirit. And so we must be aware that this is also about first century church. That this was also about the Jews. So when you look at it, you've got to interpret. You've got to add back in what he was writing to as well, including that church. You've got to go back and look at the Israelite people and figure out, why did they wander in a wilderness for 40 years? Why did they go through what they went through? What was the issue? And I can tell you, he's telling us they had ears, but they couldn't hear. They had eyes, but they couldn't see. And it was their heart was hardened. They had a hardness of their heart. You know, there are people that sit in church every, that every Sunday, whether it be this one or any other, and the word comes because the sower sows the word, and the word is always sown, and it's always the same. Everybody gets the same word. That's the fact. Nobody gets a different word. You don't get a different word than I get. You get the same word and the same sower. The only variable is the ground. Amen. Somebody ought to say Amen. The same word that heals me is the same word that heals you. 
the same word that delivers me is the same word, and the one sowing it is always God. It may be through a channel, but it'll be God that sows that word. Somebody ought to say amen. And that word is always the same. But the results of that word are you're going to get from this scripture. Let's go to Mark real quick because you need to see this. Let's turn over to Mark. You need to get, get over here with me. Turn over to Mark chapter 4. This is written three times. If you ever see something written three times, better take note. Take note. Now, I'm not going to go. Just give me five more minutes. That's it. Just five minutes. I want you to go to verse 10. It's all the same up to verse 10, but, or a little bit different, but look at verse 10. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked him of the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all things are done in parables. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not, look at the word, understand. Lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, know you not. Now you better highlight this, underline this, make sure you get this one. If you don't get this, you're going to miss something. Because I want to show you something just amazing about this. I'm not teaching this by chance today. You ready? Go back to that verse. Verse 13. He said to them, know you not this parable? And how then will you know all the other parables? Do you know what he just said there? Do you have any idea what was just said? This is the key to all of it. I'm about to read you the key. When you, when you, any other parable you read comes back to this one. If you don't understand this one, the rest of them are moot. They don't mean nothing. You don't get this principle. If you miss this principle, you will have missed your ability to receive the hundredfold return. Amen. If you don't get this. I mean, think about what he just told us. And, 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 and this is the thing. Sitting in this room, again, I tell you, there are people in here that are going to fall into certain categories of ground. People that will come and hear the word of God and they never receive it. It never goes in. People that get the word of God, it stays for a while. And then when they get challenged with something, you know, everybody's submitted until they don't want to be submitted. I had a guy one time, just think about this, and I'm, I'm going to go forward. Keep that up there because I want you to see it. I had a guy one time that was coming to the church years ago. And I went into his office. He was working at one of the local muffler shops here in town. And I went into his office, and he was the manager, the GM of this local shop, making good money, really doing well. And he'd been to the church before, and I had gone in. They started coming to the church. And it was right before the race in Darlington. And so I went in, and I said, listen, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Pastor Steve. And I said, wonderful. He said, but I'm really upset. I said, why are you upset? He said, because the race is coming up Saturday, and my boss says I can't go to the race. I've got to work. I said, well, praise God. The money will be good. You'll be blessed. You need to go ahead and come to work. You can watch it on TV. No, sir. Uh-uh. He said, I'm going to that race. I said, well, you know, that might not be a good thing. You might not should go to that race. He said, no, let me tell you something. My boss has told me if I go to that race, he's going to fire me. Well, he'll just have to fire me. See, it's always good, man, until somebody stops you from doing something you want to do. Anybody that's been a manager has had that person come to them before. Well, you know, it's spring break. <laughs> well, you know, you know, the beach is calling my name. Come on, I'm telling you good now. I'm just, I'm preaching real good. Now, I don't know if anybody in here is like this. I don't know what's going on with any of y'all. I mean, you might be going through this same dilemma. But if you've been a manager, you've had that person walk into your office, and that one Friday meant more than the whole year of paychecks. Somebody ought to shout out amen. amen. You might have even been that person. I'm not going in today because today is the day they throw in my birthday party. I'm preaching real good. This is not what you want to hear. But see, God always comes to us and presents us with a moment of clarity. Come on, I'm preaching real good. There will be a moment of clarity when either you'll go straight with God or you're going to deviate. There'll be a moment when God will ask you to do something that is beyond reason. Come on, somebody ought to say amen. 
that will come against what you want to do. That will come against the moment in your life where you don't want to answer yes. I've had people where God dealt with them. God doesn't deal with everybody the same. I'm going to say this. You might get mad at me. You might disagree with me totally. Now, for me, drinking is 100% out of the question. I can never have a sip of wine. I will never drink a beer. It's out of the question. I don't believe it for me. But I don't believe God told everybody that. But there are some people that you could never, ever put a wine glass to your mouth. Because God put his finger on it and said, don't do that. Look at y'all. Look at y'all. What did he just say? Interestingly enough, the closer you get to God, and the more God calls you to do something, the more he'll pin you down on stuff that's no longer acceptable in your life. Come on, I'm preaching real good. And as God deals with us, there'll be a moment where you said, you know what, I'm not going to go there. Who does he think he is to tell me that I can't do that? I can, I can do whatever I want to do. I can do. And then people, there, there are places you can go and they'll just tell you it's all alright. But I tell you something according to this scripture, it's not alright. And if you don't get this scripture, if you don't get this, right. you ain't got nothing. Right. You're missing the whole boat. You don't have an understanding at all to him that hears. And so what he's saying here is not actually what you think he's saying. I'm not going to let them hear. He said, they didn't want it. And they closed me out and said, forget you. And so I'm going to seal it up from them. How many of you understand, when you resist God, if you continue to resist God, you'll seal your own. You will seal your own opportunity. You keep sitting in church. And you're one of these grounds. Which one are you? You need to read this passage because I'm going to be back here next week. And you need to come. If you want to get this because faith comes by and hearing comes by the word, some won't even come. And God said, if you don't want it, I'm not giving it to you. I will shut you off. You don't want it? I'll hide it from you. Think about that. Think about what I just said. I'll hide it from them. Actually, let me put it this way. He hides it for us, not from us. Isn't that a wonderful statement? God hides it for us so that in my pursuit of God, it can be found. But it can only be found in the pursuit. It can only be found when I pursue him. If I want a hundredfold, yes. I'm going to have to pursue him. Yes. I'm going to have to search him. I'm going to have to find it. I'm going to have to dig it. Because God's hundredfold is only reserved for those who are willing to do that. That's what this scripture says, isn't it? Uh, let's look at it. Let's just look at it. Let's just, I mean, just for the sake of looking at it. God, does, God wanted to heal them. He wanted to set them free. The word understand here is the word me, And it means to take the, or to be able to put together or to comprehend or to be wise. So he says they're not able to be wise. They're not able to comprehend. They're not able to put it together. I confused them so they couldn't put it together. And the only way they're going to put it together is by being the ground that puts it together. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. So he says we can be able to put it together. Listen to Romans 1, 16 and 17. 1, 16 and 17. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes, the first Jew and the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. From faith to faith it is written, the just shall live by faith. So there's a revelation. The word there means apocalypto. Which means this, revealed. Apocalypto means to, the cover is taken off. And to make known or manifest, unveil or lay open. You see, the gospel of Christ pursued, lays open, and unveils. Oh, my goodness. And, yeah, <laughs> for some of us, we got that this morning. For some of, that, some of you sitting in this room understood what I just said. That there's a table spread for every believer. The work of Christ is already done. The table is spread. Everything you and I need is spread before us, but for me to have the table, it has to have the cloth taken off. 
and God wants to unveil and, re, re, and expose to us the blessings. Why don't I have healing? Because the veil hadn't come off. Why, why have my finances keep going down the tubes? I get money and then it's gone. Because something's missing in your revelation. The veil is still there. You haven't pursued God. I mean, you're saved. I'm a 30. Whew. That's all I want. I'm going to heaven. I don't care whether I get blessed here. I don't care whether I see anybody saved. Whether I have the money and resources to give into the house of God so that they can build buildings. All I want to do is eat my food, drink my drinks, show up at 10.30 on Sunday morning, be done with it, and go to work every week. And we're going to find out that some of these people, yeah, I mean, just think about this. If you look at the third ground that he talks about where it was sown in their heart and then the cares of life came and took its deceitfulness of riches. Some people in this room have said, I've got to have a second job. And I've got to work all day Sunday. They never said, God, give me a job where I don't have to work on Sunday. Never thought they could pray and say, God, give me a job that allows me to go to church. He said he'd give you the desires of your heart. They never used their faith to be in the position to hear from God because it really wasn't that important. But they'll go out and they'll work themselves to death not to pay for the kingdom. What do you go to work for? Why are you working the second job? Because you've got to pay for that car. Ooh, ooh. And the new shoes. And the microwave oven. And the 60 inch big screen. And the cable TV. That's why you're working. <laughs> Isn't it? Look, everybody got real quiet. Oh, uh, he's right. I am right. But if you don't get this principle, you will have missed the entire message of the gospel. Because this is a kingdom, kingdom message. 